It's time for This Week in Research Papers. That's right, welcome to Twerp. And now here's your resident twerp, the study finds guy, Jeff Allen. Ah, the fanfare. Welcome to This Week in Research Papers, the time of the week that we go over everything you need to know about all things study finds. And this week we've got awesome topics like my favorites. If you stink like me, we might agree. And a robot fish who cleans and swims. <laughs> and busy roads, your death forebodes. All right, let's get things underway with number 10. A high tech study of underwater jars reveals the secrets of Roman winemaking. <laughs> Originally, I thought this said underwear jars, and I'm like, why would Romans keep their underwear in a jar? And what does it have to do with wine? I mean, I understand fruit of the vine, but that's a bit literal. Anywho, researchers have discovered that in coastal Italy, during the Roman Empire, wine was made using native grapes in jars, waterproofed with imported tar pitch. Not sure what tar pitch is, but it sounds yummy. <laughs> it actually has to do with pine trees. A team from Italy and France examined three Roman period amphorae, that's what they call ancient Roman jar kits, amphorae, from a seabed deposit near the modern harbor of San Felici, Cicero, south of Rome. <laughs> Can't we just call them old jars? Oh well, when in Rome. <laughs> Ho! <laughs> Anywho, a combination of chemical markers, plant tissue residue, and pollen provided evidence of great derivatives and pine within the jars. See, told you. The team says their evidence suggests that the amphorae was part of a red and white winemaking process. Well, the pine helped to create tar for waterproofing the jars and perhaps also flavoring the wine. Nice. Sounds like gin to me. You know, gin kind of tastes like pine. Either way, I guess Romans knew how to party. The grapevine pollen matches wild species from the area, suggesting that Roman winemakers used local plants, although it's still unclear whether these were domesticated at the time. The pine tar, on the other hand, is non-local. Researchers believe it was imported from Calabria or Sicily based on other historical sources. So, researchers think the process was way more meticulous and complicated than previously thought. On to number nine. Follow your nose. A new study finds that people choose friends based on how they smell. <laughs> Ew. This whole study just stinks. <laughs> See what I did there? Birds of a feather may flock together. I said flock together. Get your mind out of the gutter. A new study finds people are more likely to gravitate towards others who smell like them. Researchers in Israel have discovered that people with similar body odors are more likely to become friends. <laughs> Thank goodness we don't do the whole butt sniffing things like the dogs do. <laughs> that would be embarrassing. Well, the team at the Wiseman Institute of Science say a person's sense of smell still comes into play, albeit subconscious, and more than previous studies have suspected. Researchers used an e-nose. I guess that's an electronic nose. There, there's a picture of it right there. They use that to measure the chemical makeup of the odor of the study participants. <laughs> they found that friends had body odor that was more significantly like those of each other than those of people in random pairs. Yeah, I'm just thinking here, spitballing maybe, probably because they stopped for a burrito on the way or drove in the same car. I'm just asking the questions that I know you want to ask. Either way, it seems that friends do similarly stink. All right, number eight. Holographic patients are now helping to train the next generation of doctors. Wow. So I can see that the patient is sitting up and they're quite breathless at the moment. This sounds very much like Star Trek here, you know, wearing mixed reality headsets. Students can treat virtual patients using technology that mimics medical situations. Well, that's pretty cool. The smart people at Aiden Brooks Hospital in Cambridge developed the pioneering technology. National Health Service Director Stephen Powers says... The new tech would help train the next generation of doctors by allowing them to practice medicine in real time. And they literally mean practice in this case. <laughs> Not on me. <laughs> it kind of sounds like how I fixed my dryer last week. <laughs> hey, you know, Harry, I need to take out this guy's appendix. Can you Google it up there on the hollow patient thingy so I can make sure I'm doing it right? 
<laughs> I'm still hung over. Oh, goodness. Named Hollow Scenarios, the mixed reality technology is now available for license to medical institutions across the world, with developers saying it offers a cost-effective and flexible training resource. Okay, number seven. Fossils of our earliest ancestors may be one million years older than scientists thought. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> so my anthropology course was just a big frickin' waste of money. Is that what you're saying? I kid. Um, but do I? Study authors say the Sterkfontein Caves in Johannesburg reveal nearly four million years of evolution. They contain more than a third of the world's early hominid bones, crucial links in the chain to modern humans. The UNESCO World Heritage Site now has been identified as the global center of humanity's ancient past. It was home to Littlefoot, whose almost complete 3.67 million year old skeleton was discovered there. The fossils there belong to a primitive species known as Australopithecus. Hundreds more individuals have been found within the network of underground tunnels. The study is based on the radioactive decay of the rare isotopes aluminum-26 and beryllium-10 in the mineral quartz. Previous methods relied on analysis of calcite flowstone deposits. However, observations showed that these are younger than the cave itself. So underestimating the age of the fossils. Stupid calcite. Australopithecus existed at Sterkfontein almost a million years prior to the appearance of Paranthropus and Homo, providing more time for them to evolve. It places the hominins front and center in the history of early human evolution, according to the researchers. Ultimately, the new data shows these fossils are much older than scientists originally thought. All right. Number six, could a tiny robotic fish help remove microplastics from the environment? So this robotic fish that swims around sucking up microplastics from waters has been created by scientists in China. The tiny machine wiggles its body and flaps its fins just like the real thing. The fish robot measures just a half an inch from nose to tail, rapidly turning a near-infrared light laser on and off at the tail helps to propel it forward. In experiments, the robot moved nearly three body lengths per second, a record for soft marine robots. It reached the same speed as active phytoplankton. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Not really. Seen in this video, the untethered device repeatedly absorbed nearby polystyrene microplastics and transported them elsewhere. Incredibly, the device can also heal itself after being cut, still maintaining its ability to pick up the debris. Its durability and speed make it ideal for monitoring microplastics and other pollutants in harsh aquatic environments. The device is made of mother of pearl, which is found on the inside of clamshells and is strong yet flexible. <laughs> I don't know. It all seems a bit fishy to me. <laughs> oh, I kid. All right, number five. Speaking of fishy, humans' middle ears evolved from fish gills? Well, <laughs> that's what the study concluded. This is according to a study of a 438 million year old fossil fish brain. Incidentally, my nickname in high school. <laughs> Scientists discovered the fossil of the brain case of a shuyu fish Despite its skull only being the size of a fingernail, much like mine, they were able to <laughs> recreate seven virtual casts of the brain. They also unearthed the first 419 million year old armored galeaspid fossil completely preserved with gill filaments. Researchers found spiracle or slits behind the eyes leading to the mouth which allows some species to breathe in sharks and all rays. The spiracle is responsible for the intake of water before being expelled from the gills. The spiracle evolved into the ear of modern four-legged vertebrates, eventually becoming the hearing canal used for transmitting sound to the brain via tiny inner ear bones. This function has remained throughout the evolution to humans. Meaning if it wasn't for fish, you couldn't hear. Thanks, fish. Number four, our robots driving U.S. workers towards substance abuse and mental illness. Researchers from the University of Pittsburgh have found that American workers are more likely to report mental health problems and instances of substance abuse if they work alongside robots. Those robot bastards. Although the same report found that employees who work with robots are less likely to suffer serious injury while working. Oh, sorry, robots. Yay, robots. 
Overall, for every standard deviation increase of robot exposure, injuries fell by 1.2 cases for every 100 workers. But researchers say the development of robotics may lead to even more destructive results than on-the-job accidents. Damn dirty robots. (sighs) This report has got me going back and forth. They found that the more people work alongside robots, the number of drug or alcohol-related deaths increase by 37.8 cases per 100,000 people. And communities working next to robots also saw a small increase in the local suicide rate and the number of mental health issues people reported. I still don't trust them with their super hearing and their electricity using and their doodads and blinking gizmos and stuff. I have a cup of water ready to short circuit the first one who tries to take my stuff. Where was I? Oh, okay. (laughs) Number three. Now we're hearing that any light exposure during sleep could lead to obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure. So, it's my cell phone and my smoke alarms LED's fault that I'm a fat pig. Hey, I'm not that big. Who wrote that? You're fired. It's probably the Doritos and the cheese dip and the ice cream. Well, seriously... Does a bright smartphone screen often wake you up in the middle of the night? A new study finds... Ooh, I said the name of the website. (laughs) A new study finds that any kind of light exposure during sleep can significantly increase the risk of developing obesity, diabetes, or high blood pressure, especially in older adults. Seriously, though, it's that stupid little light in the smoke alarm. I don't know why that one gets me. (laughs) Researchers found that harmful light exposure can come from all sorts of places, including room lights, left on for safety, bedrooms without blackout shades, and digital devices lighting up at odd hours. Doctors added these tips for older adults, but please only do this if you can do so safely. Here they are. Don't turn on lights. If you must, have a light on. Use a dim light closer to the floor. (laughs) A dim light, also a nickname I had in high school. Color is important. Use amber or red, orange lights, which are far less stimulating for the brain. You should also keep white or blue lights, like smartphone lights, away from a sleeping person. And blackout shades or eye masks can do a better job of controlling outdoor light. All right, good luck with that. Number two. (laughs) Number two. I said number two. Here's some cheerful news. Living near a busy road can raise your risk of premature death by 20%. Welcome to the city. (laughs) I think this one kind of falls under the no shit category, but scientists from New York University say people exposed to above average levels of air pollution were 20% more likely to die over the next 14 years, mainly from cardiovascular disease. Well, that's if you're not murdered on a subway. I digress. This study also shows that rates of heart attacks and stroke rose by 17% among the affected. The finding opens the door to screening programs and preventative measures that improve chances of survival. Participants were mostly poor and agreed to have their health monitored during annual visits dating back to 2004. Okay, and the upshot here is pretty good. Researchers hope that the findings can lead to risk maps to help with early treatment. And that's a good thing, if it works. All right, you've been waiting for it. Number one. Starting babies on a Nordic diet could prevent childhood obesity, according to a new study. An international team found that the diet rich in low protein foods like berries, fish, root vegetables, and whole grains can instill healthier eating habits. Infants four to six months old consume small portions of these foods, as well as breast or formula milk. A year later, they were eating almost double the number of vegetables than those fed conventional baby foods. <laughs> yeah, this might have been a good idea for me. My ice cream habit is just a kick in the pants. Lead author Dr. Ulrika Johansson, a pediatrician at the University of Umea, says there did not appear to be any side effects. Well, why would there be? This stuff is good for you. You don't hear many doctors saying a You know, you really need to get more of that fake processed food in this child, and every now and then a bowl of gummy bears wouldn't hurt either. I mean, don't forget your ice cream if you want them to develop a good case of lactose intolerance. (laughs) Of course, check with your pediatrician or your doc, because he or she may be a little smarter on this than me. Researchers concluded, quote, A Nordic diet reduced in protein is safe, feasible, and may contribute to sustainable and healthy eating during infancy, and early childhood. Now still, from me, your study finds guy, I'm saying, check with your doctor. (laughs) 
Well, there you go. That's your twerp update for this week. Time for me to go reevaluate my life and start exercising. The writers were just brutal this week. <laughs> but I need a pizza first, though. I'll get a pizza, then exercise. This has been This Week in Research Papers. You can check out more info on this and other studies by clicking in the link in the description below and head over to studyfinds.com. <laughs> <laughs>